As to ensure that I don't exhaust more of your time as well as mine, because I'm very limited right now, I'm immediately jumping into the mosaic and going to start disassembling this right away. The set that we'll be building today is set number 9446, otherwise known as Destiny's Bounty. Consisting of 684 pieces of those, there are six minifigures. Kendo J, Kendo Zane, Lord Garmadon, Sensei Wu, Scales, and Slithra. Originally released in 2011, this set sold for $79.99. And with that, everything is separated out for Destiny's Bounty. Now, this set is extremely unique. There are a lot of unique pieces that boost up the price for this, uh, especially and specifically designed specific purposes, basically, for this set. Once I get around to them, I'll be able to explain a bit more as to what is actually going on. But for now, let's go through the roster of the list. I believe that we've already met Scales, the... Uh, current head of the Hypnobri, followed by Slithra, but when I said current for Scales, Slithra was the original head, and then Scales somehow took it away. I think there was, like, cheating involved. I don't remember from the show, but that's all I can really remember. And this is the first instance of any set that actually has Lord... Garmadon, I'll call them, I'll call him Lord Garmadon, whereas Garmadon, uh, was just one. Uh, Lord Garmadon now has two sets of arms, and I knocked down Slithra. Lord Garmadon is unique in which he, like, uh, Samukai from the first season, or the first third of the first season, <laughs> if based off what, uh, other things and other sources tell me. Uh, he's got four arms, followed up by his brother, Sensei Wu, and two of the Kendo, virgin, Kendo versions of the ninja, Zane and Jay. If you wait around and stick around and watch around and listen up and everything, you're going to see two more versions, obviously Cole and Kai, but um, I know one of the remaining two has a specific set that isn't as common as one might think. So, uh, I think there's one more thing that I need to talk about, uh, oh yeah, yeah, once I open this I see it right away. Here we are, this little, uh, basket, box thing, uh, in it is got four, one stud, maybe two block tall, uh, little pieces that are technically supposed to be cannonballs. Uh, and I don't spoil anything for this set or any other set because there have been many other sets in history that have used them as cannonballs before. Um, but as we saw back in, uh, Earth Dragon Defense, there are little jewels and you get three of which, uh, that kind of just hang around. I'm, for all intensive purposes, trying to keep it all nice and tidy so they don't go missing, uh, for me. Uh, I'm keeping them in the box, and then uh, we also have the map that had the locations for all four of the uh, golden weapons. And you're allowed to keep them all nice and tidy in here, and I'm going to lose pieces very quickly if I continue to talk as sporadic as I do. So I'm going to move everything off to the side and start building the first half of Destiny's Bounty, because there's a little bit of an extra set. And to break everything... Uh, to break the ice for everything, um, this set is going to require me to move everything a lot of the time. Like, I can't just keep it in one position and build it toward the camera. So I'm sorry if people want me to build toward the camera. This one requires some very specific uh, placements for uh, a lot of uh, certain pieces. So I'm not going to even take the chance Plus, it, it, it's, it would just get annoying having to flip every which way every now and again just to try and figure out the alignment of everything. So that is why I'm going to be building toward me in the way of the directions. Uh, and that way I can keep on moving somewhat at a decent pace because it feels if, like, whenever I would try and build the uh, other way, building toward the camera... I think it would take me maybe one 
1.1, maybe 1.2 times as long to build a set simply because I have to look at the instructions, think of where the placement is going to be, and then just work around that, essentially. But, who knows? Could just be talking out my ass, like I seem to do quite a bit. <laughs> Much like the uh, first third of the uh, first season's set, uh, they always needed to include the one special thing that's going on. In the first third, it was... Um, what's it called? Golden weapons. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Trying to think and make sure I'm not missing anything. It was the golden weapons, and now in this, it's at least having one singular... Oh, what are they called? Serpentine. Yeah, serpentine staff. Staves. In my head, I wanted to say hypnobrise staves, but there are four serpentine staves that need to be addressed, so... That wasn't going to be correct at all. And again, like I mentioned before, as well as the snakes that are just before you, this is the Hypnobri Shrine Staff thing with dripping ooze, and uh, you're not here for that. Let's just get on to the actual set. Starting right away with a unique piece, this thing right here. It might not look like, uh, ooh. <laughs> it might not look like any piece that you've ever seen before, and... There's a reason for that. Once this thing starts to get built, you'll understand the shape of it, but it's basically the hull of a boat. Uh, I want to say hull, but I'm not a boating expert. I'm not even a boating aficionado. To be frank, I don't even know jack shit about boats. I think I'm, say I'm saying this. I think... Port is left and starboard is right. Starboard? Starboard? I don't even know if, uh, which way is correct in pronunciation. I, that, that's as much as my boating knowledge goes. I know how to raise and lower anchors. That's about it. <laughs> Ooh, actually, now that I think about it, boats and, like, uh, uh, anchors and shit. One game that I think is really cool and underappreciated but you need friends to play and like experience everything about it you can play it solo but i don't think it's uh ever going to be as fun as it could be if you don't have somebody to play with such as myself is a game called sea of thieves or any other like pirating boating experience it's a really good concept for like multiplayer aspect as well as just like companionship and like what you can do in the game uh sea of thieves did a remarkable job on what uh the realism is for that game in itself it's really cool to see what they could do it's just after a while people started to get bored of it because they could only do so much as a game will allow you to obviously uh, after a certain point you'd do everything in a game and it's and it's not the designer's fault it's not the player's fault it's just after a while a game gets completed and then you don't know what you should do now there are games that have incredible replayability a lot of those games uh deal more so with the fact of let's say choice based uh games such as until dawn or uh, Detroit Become Human. Those have incredible uh, replayabilities, as well as companionship. Uh, companionship? Why did I use that word? Um, companion playability. Multiplayer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what am I saying? Multiplayer aspects, but unintentionally for Until Dawn, and most notably for that company, uh, their recent... Uh, Dark Anthologies Edition, uh, Little Hope, man, I, I've never liked, uh, choice-based games, and I think I've mentioned this in the playthrough that I did for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold Wars campaign, uh, I've never been one to actually like choice-based games, just because I don't like how some games, uh, limit, uh, how a player's decisions actually uh, turn out in in an event 
the one game that I know of, uh, I don't, I don't know if Heavy Rain is like this as well. I've heard a lot of good things about that that title, but the one title that sticks out in my head that does uh, choice-based uh, random occurrences and choices and everything extremely well is Detroit Become Human. Every little thing matters basically into that game. Uh, if you've ever seen like a screenshot of the decisions that a player has made and or just a route that someone's taken there are little 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 minute choices that someone can that affect something way later uh say somebody goes to someone gets a bowl of cereal and they accidentally pick up a fork but there is a spoon laying somewhere else in the level that's a that's a major choice sometimes in the game something as minute as that to the player you mess up in getting a fork uh so somebody acts so somebody else grabs a spoon and is like oh sorry i i noticed that you grabbed a fork here's this spoon so then you meet this new person and, and it's exactly like that like it's some tiny little details but you wouldn't have met the other person if you didn't make the wrong decision. I think the biggest issue for this set is going to be um, making sure I choose the right color for the brown, because I don't know if it's really apparent on your view, but for me it's a black, dark gray, light gray, brown, and then a dark brown before me in this order. However, certain pieces only have certain shapes, so if, if I can't find it, I'll just have to look into a different color, and that's basically it. Beyond that, Everything is self-explanatory and I can just see color. I'm not colorblind. I have been born lucky, basically. <laughs> what are the odds of someone being born colorblind? And isn't it more often than not a male will be born colorblind? Or can only men be colorblind? I forget if that's if that's the actual thing. Oh well. I I should probably stop pussyfooting around, basically. Sorry if you haven't heard that word before. And if and if it's a new uh, word in your vernacular pussyfooting basically walking on eggshells dancing around a subject I, I I don't have anything to dance around. I just uh, Didn't have any reason to hop into one subject or another But the more I talk about something else the more time I have to not Talk about the topics and not run out of topics uh, Right now uh, I should probably say when was this recorded An easy 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 way to do it it is currently November 28th. I don't remember what calendar date um, it was, but it is a few days. It is... Wait, hold on. No, it's Saturday. It's uh, uh, two days after Thanksgiving. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just do basic math, dumbass. <laughs> oh, God. For the first time ever, me, uh, my mother, and I, uh, because of... Uh, COVID and everything decided to uh, do a turkey. Now it, it it wasn't like a full uh, a full turkey. It was a uh, turkey. Was it only a turkey breast? I forget. But it was bone in, so it was enough to try and uh, uh, keep my mother on her toes and have her worried that she'd mess up. In all honesty, just follow directions, follow a recipe, and you'll be perfectly fine for a lot of uh, recipes and everything that you do. Beyond that, it was walk and park. We just followed uh, the recipe, threw it in the oven, and uh, enjoyed what we could. Bob was our uncle, basically. I, I, I don't know how to bring it into the next subject. The next day after that uh, explains the whole reason why uh, my, my mother and I uh, did Thanksgiving ourselves either the day before or two days before i can't recall correctly um we received a message or a text message saying that and we weren't going it was going to be my aunt uh taking uh my grandfather up to her house to have um thanksgiving dinner just because she wanted to have let him have uh thanksgiving this but everyone else would have their own thanksgivings as you should have. You should not have uh, traveled via the season just for a single ounce of turkey. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving, um, 
or even the day of, I, actually, it might, it might have been the day of Thanksgiving, my aunt that was going to have my grandfather over uh, sent a message to the family saying, hey, listen, I'm not feeling well, just let my grandfather, me, uh, know that uh, I don't want him to come over, I, I'm not feeling well, I don't want him to catch anything, heaven forbid, I do indeed have COVID or anything. She's also a teacher, so she's exposed to um, other humans on a daily basis, uh, and little humans at that, that sometimes struggle to keep their hands to themselves and their hands out of their noses, out of their mouths, and a lot of other places, but that's besides the point. Come Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, if you can't keep track of dates, I go over and I do what I'm supposed to. I clean up everything for my grandfather and make sure that everything's uh, ship shape and make sure that it's an actual stable living condition. Everything's clean. And then because I've gotten in such a routine of how quickly I can clean stuff, I go and sit on the couch I open up my phone and I see uh, one missed call. I uh, call back my mother and it's uh, her saying, listen, don't tell your grandfather just yet because I'll be the one to tell him. But my aunt did indeed contract COVID and it, it was a positive result. I don't know if any symptoms are good, bad at this time. I... I've only heard of the result of the test. And so because of that, uh, I was five days before she started showing, showing any symptom at all of feeling unwell. I don't know if there were any coughs or anything from her, from her point, but that's all that was basically going on. Um, and before I go anywhere else, I want to say while I was taking this apart, I have to sneeze. So excuse me if I do. I tried to pull this piece off and it snapped near the base and not only did it break once it broke as it it broke twice somehow and while I was cleaning the broken pieces up I went to I went to pick it up like this like the two little shards I see in my hand that there's one in the in the palm of my hand and then I look around uh, the table to think that I've like missed it no it's stuck in like my skin like it it, it was sharp enough that it punctured my skin. It, it didn't cause me to bleed or anything. Don't worry about that. But it was sharp enough to the point where it entered my skin and was able to just dangle there. Uh, going back to my grandfather and my aunt, after uh, hearing that news and her uh, being honest and saying that she has been in contact five days prior to anything, uh, we immediately said, yes, let's get my grandfather tested. And that was only the case if my aunt's test came back positive, in which it did. But now that my grandfather is tested, we have to wait five days for that test to be fully completed. Uh, I'm mainly doing this for anybody who hasn't experienced anything yet. It's at this point, it seems a little bit, it's almost to the point where it seems alien, not to at least know of one person that hasn't. Uh, been exposed to it at, at this time. Um, I hope that whoever it was that uh, you personally or may not personally know um, is doing better. I hope that they're back into full health, back in full stride. Uh, and if not, I hope they have a uh, swift, speedy, and healthy recovery. And right now, as uh, the numbers that we've seen right before the surge of Thanksgiving. I hope that these numbers are at least somewhat controllable because we had the largest spike in the United States numbers before people started going around. And now we're seeing people go travel back after Thanksgiving and I can only see this getting worse. Whether these are minor symptoms, whether these are... Uh, people that can recover from the bad side, we can only hope. However, the worst may show its true form in it going after young children, which may or may not spring back, or the elderly, more often than not, will not spring back. 
and that is basically where that's at with my grandfather. We're just hoping that there isn't anything that comes back positive for him, and heaven forbid that it does, myself, my mother, and I believe my other aunt uh, will all have to get uh, tested for being in close proximity with him. And then after that, if any of us test positive, uh, say uh, me or my mother test positive, then uh, we have to make sure that my uh, sister gets tested. And then uh, after that, if uh, my sister tests positive, she has to tell her friend. And then her friend has to make sure that if she's positive, uh, she doesn't get her family sick and uh, people that she regularly regularly meets with because that's how it spreads unknowingly uh with the people that you connect with you may only meet one person but that's all it needs is one person to spread it so my aunt met someone who was covid positive or didn't know it yet uh got sick possibly infected my grandfather i go over there to clean i get infected from touching one thing that he touched before i get sick i live in the same house as my mother and my sister because she's home from college right now i think i might have mentioned that in the last episode of the lego building not quite sure don't hold me accountable for that and that's just how it goes from my aunt to my grandfather to me to my sister from my sister to her friend it's all it takes is one to go down the line and the people that it spreads to is exponential it may have gone from my aunt to my grandfather as one but from my aunt to my grandfather to me i can spread it to two more people and then from those two people we take the one root of my sister to her friend that's only a transfer of one but that one has access to i believe five members of her family so that's a lot of people that's a lot of people that's all that it needs and that's how disease and infection and everything just spreads exponentially it's really something that people take lightly and it's really apparent where we are right now and how we're trying to prevent everything because right now it's it's do or die for a lot of people right now again like i've said i don't know uh, of any uh current symptoms for my uh aunt we're hoping that it is at least uh controllable there aren't uh any symptoms that could be harmful to her or her husband at this time just hoping and that's that's really all you can do is just hope now uh, uh now that i've given you such a bleak outlook on a lot of stuff let's go away from that um <laughs> uh i i know that it's the 28th and the 26th was the uh was thanksgiving uh for americans and for some odd reason other countries that have american friends that somehow get them roped into it but you know thanksgiving dinner is cool for other countries to celebrate too i i, I just don't get it <laughs> friendsgiving i know is a thing sorry i'm getting back onto that uh a few days before my birthday i uh my birthday was on november 22nd actually and in saying that that was my 22nd birthday <laughs> yeah i'm i'm 22 i'm 22 building legos what of it I enjoy what I enjoy. Get on my level. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that was really dumb. Oh, I should probably uh, uh, not forget uh, this one thing that I want to talk about with this set. Uh, there are two little knives over here. And I'm just going to show off real quick. Ah, if, if you're watching me right here, I don't know if you can see this right here. Uh, it's a little knife right there little hidden compartment mini hidden blade thing for necessary utilities i don't know <laughs> listen i talk out my ass a lot in this in this uh series uh, as you would know if you regularly watch this program <laughs> like this could be considered a program <laughs> no one pays for this shit <laughs> well i do i paid for this shit i i paid for uh 
the Lego set. I paid for the camera. I paid for my mic. I paid for the recording equipment. I paid for my laptop. I paid for my PC. Everything. Every little thing counts towards recording it. But I don't make anything back. You know what? I'm not going to complain. <laughs> but going back to the, uh, I'll say birthday-ish sort of thing. Um, 22. Not that much different from 21. And might I just say 21 in America. Uh, for me, didn't feel any different from 20. And 20 didn't feel anything any different, uh... To me than uh, 19 and 19 didn't feel any different than 18 personally um, so much in fact that I uh, when when people in the United States turn 21 like they're supposed to and wait but you know other people just mm, don't have patience it's that's their choice but oh well if it's different in your country it's different in your in your country and if you waited properly you you did the right thing you literally followed a simple basic rule i am not one to even drink in any sense of the matter even while it's legal for me to i just don't like the taste of alcohol very chalky to me it's got such a chalky taste after everything's all gone down your throat uh the only thing that i think that i've ever really enjoyed is a wine cooler i think i think that's what they're called in saying that i'm still not confident and that's actually what it is slash was i only enjoyed it because it was so overly fruity that it overpowered the alcohol taste in the beginning and then once i started to drink more and more of it I started to taste more and more of the alcohol, which I did not like. It's just something about it just does not interest me at all. It's like how different people have different tastes for whether whether or not they like, uh, let's say, salty or sweet snacks. This is just another case of me just, like, not being picky, just having a different preference than other people, I guess. But that being said, 22, uh, just another year essentially for me i think this would be a good time like if anybody actually does like follow through and listens to any part of this i think this is where i would open comments up and just like see what people recommend what would be one drink that could possibly get me interested in uh like not heavy drinking but just like recreational drinking for fun or whatever because i'm putting fun in giant quotation marks i don't really see drinking as fun i th i think activities that uh can be like let's say accentuated by drinking would be fun oh yeah here's a here's a better way to explain it uh i've i've, I've seen people that uh post shit on like social media saying uh the people that don't drink are no fun at parties and then people that just reply back with the people that need drinks are no fun at parties i'm more so on the latter side of that argument because i don't if you need to be drunk or to have a drink to have fun then it's not fun to begin with if you can have fun and then you have a drink and it's even more fun perfectly acceptable and if anything can be fun with a drink, that's just a drink. <laughs> that, that's just you enjoying drinking. And uh, that's that can be somewhat alarming for a lot of people. It can set off a giant alarm. Uh, and then for others, sometimes it just doesn't ring a bell at all. And you're left wondering why you're in an alleyway. Blackout drunk and everything. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> You know what, I'll, I'll wait until the very end, or until, like, uh, the instructions tell me. Because there's a secret, uh, just like the Hidden Blades, this is, uh, also a secret hatch, but it serves a sp specific purpose for this one, uh, that I don't know if it says it in the instructions later. It doesn't say it here, however, but, uh, possibly it'll say it later. Ah, okay. So I have to go back a few steps, I just realized. Um, somehow I messed up, uh, well, I just didn't pay attention to a step. Um, there was this 
there was a certain point in which I put in one of these brown bars instead of two of these brown bars, which uh, are two studs longer, both going out on the same side. Okay, that would explain the whole issue that I had. I hope I'm not missing anything. That just sends an alarm through my head that says, Pay attention, better idiot. Read the, in the actual instructions that you've gone in reverse order of and go piece by piece as the thing tells you to um but i think i'm not sh i'm not sh i'm not 100% sh sure i keep wanting to say certain but i kept switching to sure in the middle of it not 100% certain i might be on the third bag i know that i i know that i am on the third bag in total but i think obviously i'm getting to the end of this first booklet but i think i'm getting near the midpoint of this uh of uh the destiny's bounty i'm trying to remember i think there were six bags actually and if there were six bags that would mean that in the middle of the fourth bag for this boat that that would be the midpoint because the first bag only comprised itself of the jewels obviously the ninja and all the other minifigures and then the one uh staff shrine and that's basically it after that it's just up in the air i guess <laughs> that being said i am like i said oh my god i just keep repeating myself simply because i'm an idiot woo yay ignore everything i say after a certain point Ooh, i just uh i just remembered uh one other thing that i can talk about that recently ish happened i don't know if you heard about this but uh sony and uh microsoft released their newest uh gaming consoles the xbox series x and s as well as the playstation 5 hard copy slash digital copy only but uh, I, gu I guess that's something to talk about <laughs> listen i i'm run i'm running on uh empty right now i, I don't know what's going on i i've lost my mind I, I really have it's it's been a rough week not really i'm i'm sorry i shouldn't lie like that i'm just not making sense is all oh if i just calm down everything might be might sort itself out <laughs> yeah right listen i like building with legos but after a while like you kind of need to focus on them a bit just to make sure you don't fuck up like i have already in this singular video yeah so uh going back to the playstation 5 and xbox series x um in all honesty i don't think much of the xbox series x slash s however and if there was any if there was ever any reason to i would think i would only just get the series x that's the smaller one right the white one with a weird looking big ass circle that i think is a fan that's not really the big seller this year uh everybody knows what is actually the big biggin big big biggin biggin the ps5 and it it's not simply by the fact that it is a playstation or the playstation 5 it's what is available why did a piece break off just by putting on a piece what the hell the playstation 5 just has some of the better exclusives and it's not just some it literally has only the better exclusives i really really wish that uh the xbox had anything to compete with against the playstation 5 just because i just want people to shut up about the console wars there's no there's literally no reason uh microsoft to have any diehard fans right now simply because there's no reason to buy an xbox one x slash s if you have an x or not an not not an xbox one x an xbox series s x slash s if you already have an xbox one every single thing is just already there there's no console exclusive games for it it's literally just another thing that you can play pc games on worse <laughs> so i don't understand what the whole 
big thing for Xbox people is right now. Uh, I just think that people just have a hard on for a company that is a multi million dollar company for no apparent reason. PlayStation 5, we just talk about those exclusives for right now. God damn. Uh, one game that I'm really looking forward to to playing and how did i skip a step again the demons souls remastered game i'm not interested in it but i've heard good things about it but the one big kicker that everybody's looking forward to as much as i am is spider-man uh spider-man ps5 miles morales i don't know what i think it's just spider-man miles morales i don't know if there's any other words in that title it, it just looks like a fun game and it looks like something that would fit right in with some of the games that i've been playing recently at, oh well not playing recently but uh the ones that have been uploaded recently for my channel which so happened to be uh the batman arkham series uh just recently it was um the first week of uh, Batman uh, Arkham Knight in uh, my uploads or not uploads posted out videos because uh, ev every week I upload seven videos to release a video throughout the week every day I just go with the flow I do what I gotta do essentially <laughs> but with this spider-man miles Morales game um, some valid criticism I think has been has come about from it um, and <laughs> and then some other non-valid criticism <laughs> um I, not even really criticism more appraisal but it's worded really oddly um people are saying that technically they think that this was more so just like a dlc sort of thing where the story was just arbitrary in a sense was it fun yes i, I have not played it uh i'm j i've just this is just some things that I've heard, like, through the grapevine from other people playing it. And it does genuinely make sense, looking at the playtime of the original story from the PS4 exclusive, I think, um, Spider-Man versus Spider-Man Miles Morales' base storyline. Uh, people believe it to possibly have been... Um, a DLC for the PS4 and then they found out about the PS5 and just thought You know what? This is a perfect opportunity to show like the capabilities of what it can do and They went along with the idea of making it into a game and that's exactly what they did Is there anything wrong with that? No uh, From what I've seen slash heard it's a really solid game. That's it that's all i really want to talk about because i don't want to listen too much about what other people have to say about it it's just through the grapevine randomly hearing some random stuff every now and again as you do sometimes you just can't avoid certain things and that's to be expected it's the gaming world with um social media in the mix you can't escape everything forever if you think you can you can't uh however and that being said, I can't get my hands on a PS5 to try and play the game, nor would I even expect to play the game soon. I've got so many other games that uh, would uh, have to be recorded before it. That being said, I really do want to play the game myself. I feel as if because like the whole it feels more like a DLC thing. It'd be a really good idea to play the um, original game as well as the DLC that they came out with uh, came out for it because from what I've heard is that it's not only is the game really good but the DLC that came out with it uh, the that uh, the DLC that came for it that they released for it Jesus Christ um, is also just that good now is it it i'll just have to find out for myself but i really do want to play miles morales but i really want to understand like everything else that's going on in the spider-man world so um the people that uh were making this game made a great choice not not only with having ps5 games also have a backwards 
uh, release. And when I say backwards, I mean um, uh, PS4 slash uh, Xbox One releases for uh, consoles and the like. Which I guess people were mixed on? I don't know. I mean, it helps keep people in the loop that might not have enough money to buy the new console the first year that it comes out and have shit ruined for them. Therein lies the solution. You don't need to buy the next uh, game console. However, for the uh, PlayStation 5, because of all the new features that uh, they showcase with just the controller alone, it is definitely worth it to at least check it out, I would say. Um, and as soon as that option is actually available at all near me, I'll try and get one. Um, I'm the, the one thing that I really want to see, oddly enough, like, the one thing that I would be most uh, impressed by it isn't even really a true game, even though that it is more of a flushed out game than what the PS4 had, uh, is Astro's Playroom, I think it's called. Um, basically, it shows off everything that um, the PlayStation 5 controller is really meant to do, as well as the PS5 in itself. And... From what I've heard is that it's actually a decent, like, easter egg filled game for uh, the Sony slash PlayStation name, as well as just a, a good test for the controller and everything for uh, the new experience for the PS5. It's genuinely a good thing to try and do that with every new release, if possible. Now, with the PS4, the game that was the Astro's Playroom equivalent back then. I I recently tried booting it up uh, just to see if there was any way that I could record that and then, like, record the PS5 one. I, I could 100% uh, do it. It's just I would need PlayStation Camera, I guess, or something like that, which there's no real need. I just... I, I don't know why you would ever want slash need a PlayStation camera. I think there's a PSVR bundle where it's cheaper to get the PSVR bundle with a PlayStation camera, but then you just have this piece of hardware that you only use for Astro's Playroom once, and then you never use it again. Like, it's just a waste of space, essentially. And I don't know how uh, so many of my friends that I've seen on... Uh, PlayStation actually have like achievements for it as well as platinum trophies because you get trophies for just playing through it and Essentially, I think people just did it for like gamer score gamer rep that being said I've never been one to really care for the whole gamer score thing to be honest I think it's a bit childish and a bit stupid like yeah, you went through this thing that you sludged your way through or was a walk in the park. Everybody knows about the infamous um, Avatar The Last Airbender, the Burning Earth thing for Xbox points. Uh, listen, I played it on PS2. It's on the channel. You can go watch it there. Uh, but it's like a f it's like a thousand gamer score basically for playing eight minutes of the game because all you have to do is just mash one button for eight minutes to get like a max combo or something listen i didn't design the game i didn't design uh the achievements don't complain to me i still think that the gamer score is really really stupid i don't know what someone would be proud of unless it's a case of, say, only one person in the world can have, like, one achievement at a time. Like, you got, uh, say there's a leaderboard for, like, some speed run, and it's, an, and it's an actual thing in the game. Being the number one player for a speed run, not that big of a speed run fan either. I think they're kind of boring as well. To each their own. Everyone's allowed to have their own opinions. I have mine, you have yours. If only one person in the world is allowed to have the achievement at the time, but it never goes away from the account, you get it. You never have to worry about that game ever. You rightfully own that achievement. Uh, you worked hard for it, and now you get to show about a uh, show about it in front of however many people actually give a shit. Uh, just so you know, I won't care at all. 
Uh, I'm, I'm too busy messing with my Legos trying to make sure that they actually fit. <laughs> and with that, that is the end of book one in assembly. That's a weird midpoint, but that is the end of a bag. Uh, makes a lot more sense than, uh, uh, what other, what weird set was it that just like ended in the middle of a bag, not even at the end of a bag? You know what I think would kind of be an interesting thing to bring up that I think, uh, is weird black friday shopping if you hear about it and the chaos that ensues in some places people would think that you're nuts or you live in the in the purge world in all honesty people scrapping people running over each other people stomping on one another people breaking other people's arms literally <laughs> not figuratively but quite literally you would think that the people that engage in that are literally insane and you would be right uh there there are places that go horrifically that go into a mental state of pure chaos simply because people just can't control themselves and i don't understand why it, that that's gonna probably be like a big thing whenever i mention a topic is me asking a general question for other people to give their input on as to why it makes sense or why it doesn't make sense or hell it doesn't make sense to me and it doesn't make sense to you explain to me why it doesn't make sense to you as well and why people do it at all i don't know how it's continued to exist for as long as it has doesn't seem fun but now with uh covid and everything people I think have started to wisen up and that they can just buy shit online uh, for their sales and it's a hell of a lot easier <laughs> it's also not as destructive and obstructive and not as deadly well who can really say that because who knows if uh, if some mail carrier on his daily route get stopped in the middle of uh in the road to get mugged or something like that uh, and everything gets stolen out of the back of his mail truck and he loses his job and then he can't feed his kids and a whole bunch of other shit sorry i'm going down a dark path again i shouldn't do that <laughs> i just looked over at my camera i don't know if the lighting has changed at all uh if it has i am very sorry about that but uh, if you can see what I'm holding, I am ho I am currently holding an anchor or a pickaxe, depending on how you hold it. Uh, but it's definitely an anchor with a string that Lego included. This isn't a string that I just randomly have. This is a full, uh, fully Lego licensed string. Um, and what you're supposed to do with this set is you're supposed to feed it through um, a hole in this piece. And while it's fed through... You're supposed to take this pre-assembled piece with a rod and literally shove it onto the string. Like, it sounds odd because it is. <laughs> uh, basically, like, the pressure of this, of this rod onto the string keeps it in place. So when you wind it up like so, it essentially just keeps it in place and it's a neat little way to allow for rebuildability rebuildity I, I, I don't know that that's probably just as dumb as anything else I've said on this channel <laughs> there we go everything's all ship shape <laughs> oh yeah I was talking about uh, Black Friday and the PS5 and everything I don't know if it's true but I heard that people were trying to uh, get access to Black Friday uh, deals for a PS5. I mean, if it existed, I would have been trying to get one as well. I would have been trying my little dick off to try and get one, but obviously there's only so many that they can produce in such a small amount of time. How has there not been more in production? I mean, I understand COVID and everything has limited pr the production line to a certain amount, but still, like, you would think that a company like Sony slash Microsoft know to produce, like, 
millions of these things. And they pro and they probably have already sold millions at this time already. But still, like, doesn't it feel like there's stuff missing? Like, there's, like, there's almost too little of people uh, without them. Like, am I crazy in thinking that? Or no? I mean, just recently, I was listening to a podcast and somebody mentioned that they themselves did indeed have a PS5, I think is what they said. I think they had a PS5. But the only thing that they have used their PS5 for a full week for was as a DVD player, I think? Oh, no, 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 a Netflix thing, I think they said. Or... Or a streaming device, I think is what they said. Uh, and that person would happen to be another, none other than the, I think, Twitch streamer, Silvervale. Uh, I don't know how many people might know of that name at this time. But um, they might know of another counterpart uh, to her and her podcast. Uh, I don't really follow their podcast too uh, religiously. I, I, I was just mainly listening to it for a guest that was on that day that I watch religiously. Uh, she just happened to mention that she had a PS5 that she only really used as a streaming service thing. I didn't think anything of it just because certain people use certain things. Certain people only want to play certain games at times. But that's besides the point of her using her devices and everything. Uh, the big thing uh, that I want to bring up is that I think she also has a YouTube channel that's doing decently well under the same name I would presume. She mainly streams on Twitch which kind of draws the line of whether or not she actually would be considered what this word would be that she is. Uh, she's a VTuber. Uh, another counter counterpart like I was saying that other people might recognize the name of a little bit more would be Project Melody or just Melody in general. Uh, she's a bit infamous for other reasons. Just VTubing in general. I had no reason to, uh, take part in it before. However, there's a big however. Uh, recently, uh, I was watching a p another podcast that also dealt with, uh, VTubers. But it was an IRL podcast that had a VTuber on special. And... It was kind of like the reverse of the uh, Silvervale one that had a real person come join them for the podcast. It was real people having a VTuber join them for their podcast. And the podcast I'm talking about that I watch, I regularly watch, uh, is called Trash Taste. Um, it's a couple of anime YouTubers. Uh, their channel names are The Anime Man, C Dog. VA. I have to say it like that because it's not like dog as in like puppies and everything. Um, it's like dog, that sort of thing. And Giguk. I'll leave you to try and figure out how that's spelled. The three of them just talk about generic stuff. Like, like it, it was originally supposed to be uh, an anime-ish podcast, but they quite literally bailed uh, on it the first... Uh, <laughs> podcast essentially uh the first podcast that they did for uh the trash taste podcast was just what they wanted it to become eventually but they just went balls to the wall unintentionally that being said everything uh i i, I just watched the podcast i enjoy what they have to say and then randomly one day they bring on uh, a vtuber uh a specific one uh, her name is, so for English speakers, it would be Calliope Mori. Uh, I'll let you try and gamble uh, with that search result in YouTube. Um, and before I dive more into that, I want to talk about this piece. This is all one giant piece, and it's the mass of this ship. And it's a massive piece as well. <laughs> uh, I'm a dork. So she was introduced onto the podcast, and... Uh, she kind of just uh, was mainly there to show off like what v the VTuber culture for what she does. To, just basically to show it off. Uh, she's a little bit different from what Project Melody and Silver Veil are. Uh, they're just VTubers for themselves. 
whereas uh, Calliope is a fully uh, paid person to be a VTuber. And if you don't know what a VTuber is, I recommend that you just Google it to find out because explaining it is very odd to say the least. Uh, with uh, Calliope being unique in her sense, she is technically one of five of the pay the English speaking. No, hold on. <laughs> How do I want to word this? It's already hard to try and like explain enough, but it's essentially it's just uh, she speaks more English than what other uh, licensed VTubers are from a company known as Hollow Live. Hollow Live is a company that essentially just produces uh, all of these uh, VTuber accounts slash people, pay them to be their spokesperson, and they're on their merry way. They just live stream whatever they're doing and wait for the money to rake in, essentially. Now, before these five were a thing, th there were multiple accounts of uh, English VTubers in existence before. However, these five were the first English licensed people from Hololive, like I said. I believe there was an existing team of maybe 50, which included Japan, China, and maybe Korea. Maybe I heard, I think I might have heard Indonesia. Don't hold me to that because that could be incredibly uh, wrong in anything that I have may have heard slash am saying. <laughs> so take everything with a grain of salt that I will begin to talk about because I'm brand new into this and that's essentially where everything stems from as to why I'm bringing it up. Uh, this one singular podcast with this one singular VTuber made me jump down the rabbit hole a little bit. I'm not as into the mix as a bunch of people are that dove into it. I'm just dipping my toes right now, and that's basically it. So, uh, obviously, you get introduced to one person, and then that one person has four other members that they're a in a team with, and then you get introduced to those four others. Uh, mainly, those people uh, also uh, collaborate with other VTubers, and then that just basically spreads like an infection, like we talked about earlier. And that's essentially what it's meant to do, is it's supposed to try and grab your attention with more and more and more and more of these people. And obviously you can't make it to all of them, so you can only make it to some of them. And so long as you make it to one of them, that's just as good as making it to all of them, in a sense. Although not technically, because numbers do show favor. I've only paid attention to one necessarily, and that was Calliope. All that she had to do was just talk about what she was doing, say that she uh, likes to make music. I listened to one song, decided to listen to it. Uh, I, th I think I said the same thing twice somehow, and I didn't even realize. Um, yeah, so I listened to I didn't listen to uh, her first song that uh, the boys were actually raving about. Decided to check out some of the archive streams, and I don't know. I, I, it's it's not really a fact of like, oh, I'm there uh, to be a part of like VTubers. I'm there to enjoy her, and the people that are chosen have an infectious personality, so you stick and stay with them, and it it's done extremely well because whether you like somebody who is extremely hyper or you like somebody who's a little bit more laid back, everybody has their own person that they seem to mesh with a little bit more than someone else. Whether they exist already in the VTubing scene or they exist in the future, eventually everyone will have one that seem to prefer over another and that's exactly what the company is looking for is to have a market hold on everybody essentially now 
is that evil I, I don't know i'm i don't know if they're setting out to be evil geniuses or whatever right now it just seems like they have a product that is doing extremely well and people donate to it i won't say i was about to say i, I won't say buy into it because essentially they're they just donate money they, they tune in and then they donate money i have not gotten to that point and it's still is alien to me even donating to an irl streamer uh it, it, it's alien to me for someone to even donate to a streamer in general the person that you're donating to most likely if they have donations is also partnered uh, to the point where they have ads running on their streams they have subscriptions so they so people avoid the ads on the stream uh, if they're partnered, they also get certain opportunities for contracts. Uh, they also get adverts that they can play on the stream. And if they're lucky enough, they can use the stream that they were paid to uh, promote something. They can also use that archive footage to make a YouTube video in which that YouTube video will make money. And or could also be advertised as well. So you are... So let's say... I am streaming and it's a sponsored stream so I am getting paid to be paid by viewers that can donate to pay me and then I can use that triple paid stream and post a video that is also sponsored to get paid while people watch the video with ads to pay me <laughs> so it's a five payment system that i think is really ugh. legalities aside i think there could be some issues in the future with that and with how people are reacting to the twitch dmca which is also another thing that's going on right now the twitch dmca hitting people pretty hard people just need to wake the fuck up <laughs> Like, it's been there since the beginning. You're, uh, like, no one is getting blindsided. It was a long time coming. And no one oh, was, like, doing anything about it. And the time just came. And when the system finally said, Listen, we've let you had it too good for too long. Just own up to it. And then people complain that they don't have it easy enough. I, I really don't think that you have any right to complain. <laughs> You have, you have a five system way to earn money and you're complaining about having to take down your streams or your VODs or your uh, clips because there was background music that you do not own at all, that you were playing illegally to make money. You, you streaming the music may not have been your intention to make money off of, but it's still not yours to use at all. You're still using it as background music. Whether you use it yourself and then turn it off for the stream, perfectly fine. You can do whatever you want. Uh, that's that's on you. That's your music to relax to. You've uh, you are the consumer. You're allowed to use it at your own discretion. However, you are not allowed to share said material as piracy is still a thing <laughs> whether you were completely fine with downloading pirated movies off the internet still legal uh it's not like you're a, you're getting away with it you are still committing an act of fraud <laughs> uh whether you get caught which is very unlikely but it's still a case that it exists at some point you just gotta wake up and smell the roses and i think what twitch is doing right now uh is actually kind of a smart tool even though that it might turn people away from the, s the service in general or from streaming on their site they still have partnership on that person where they have to require someone to stream for as long as they can and if they can't stream without music or without something else to fill in the gaps that just means that they're incapable of being an entertainer for twitch which just means they they only they need to pay people less they need to pay less people that's 
essentially what it's setting up for, I think. If not, I, I don't know what the whole thing is because YouTube has worked out a deal where the claimant system just, uh, the claimant takes all the money and revenue and sends it over. However, with Twitch, it's an entirely different ballpark because it's just up in the air. Uh, because people receive donations, the ads run at different times, uh, whether or not, a, uh, like I mentioned before, a sponsored stream is using that music. A company doesn't want you to play other people's music for their money just to be taken. You made the improper choice because that company that was sponsoring you could also be fined uh, because they're promoting their product on uh, unlicensed music. So, yeah. You are fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's not the music system that needs to be revised. You just need to be smarter. I don't care if you think that I'm a bootlicker in that case. Because it's been there for ages. It's so dumb to see people complain about it. I don't think I mentioned this before, and I was thinking about uh, doing it even in the middle of what I was doing before, like during some of my other topics. It took me almost uh, an hour and a half, maybe almost two hours, an hour and 40 minutes to take uh, apart, uh, to take this set apart before. It's gonna take me just as long a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, who knows for right now, but one thing is for certain, after I finished building, or after I finished unassembling it, I did not start building it again right away, no, 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 what I did is I took it apart, got very, very hungry, I ate, my family came home, I did or was coming home. I did not want my dogs to bark during the middle of the recording. And I waited a few hours for everything to calm back down. And here we are. So yes, it is very hot back here. It, and it has had time to heat up. Not just now, but even before that. So an hour and a half, roughly, of heat. And then I think two hours before I actually started recording again of heat. So three and a half hours. And now probably an hour again of heat. So four and a half hours of these uh, lights being on. And I am starting to lose my mind back here from it being very hot. So much so that to this point I wasn't even going to... I was about to talk over to this specific piece. Right now I'm using a different type of string. A string that actually has studs on it. Uh, if you can tell, it attaches to these wing things. Uh, you'll see what they actually do. But it attaches to this lever down at the bottom. Uh, I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Lever, lever, everything is fine with me. And then we do this. We pull on the lever and everything is nice and taut. Oh yeah, uh, I... I think I stopped in the middle of the uh, VTuber thing. Um, but yeah, I've been watching a bit more of the uh, Calliope streams. Uh, just a little bit more. Ma mainly, I've only watched uh, the songs that she's made and then a few of her game streams as well. But that that's basically all that I've watched. I've watched a few Doom streams as well as uh, some collab efforts in the Overcooked 2, I think she played with a couple of her friends. And by friends, I mean her colleagues in the VTuber scene. Um, I, I can go over their names in just a bit, but uh, one game series that I was really interested in that she did, uh, that she talked about on the, um, on the podcast, on the Trash Taste podcast, which was one of the main things that I was interested in and that made me even like consider like watching the channel at all uh, was this game called Mad Father. Now it's an older ish. Uh, oh, how do you describe it? It it's a horror game, but it looks like old age Pokemon games. Like it's uh, pixely. It's uh, eight bit. I think I think that's the word I'm looking for. And I I've seen only one other person play it. And uh, I'm just going to give them a shout out right now because they're 
a bit smaller in the YouTube scene than they used to be. Uh, Shadow Beats. He does different stuff now. Uh, he mainly streams uh, different games, but for his YouTube channel, he mainly dedicates it to Town of Salem, if you're into that. I kind of am, at times. I need to be in the right uh, mood slash setting to even be interested in that at all. That being said, I only watched him play it, and that was really fun watching him go through that and through all the puzzles. And then seeing someone else play it, I, uh, after I think years at this point, it was really cool and refreshing to see somebody uh, play the game and experience it new. Uh, I think she said that she had never played uh, that one before, but she had played another game by the same creator called Me Sal, which I've never seen. But I think she wants to play it soon. That's what she said in this in her uh, Mad Father streams. But who knows if she'll get clearance for it? Because obviously these people being licensed, they need to follow certain guidelines and what they can and can't stream, whether it be games, music, anything. Uh, hell, even the music that she herself has made with the company, I think. She's probably made it with the company, who knows. Um, she said that she uh, is a rapper in her own free time, but she's more like an underground sort of person. Like, she enjoys, like, the street rapping. I don't know how true that is, who knows. Uh, I do, like... 75% of her songs uh, one of them would just wasn't for me and that every again everyone has their own personal opinions and everything uh, Everyone has their own personal tastes. I just Wasn't into one of them. The yeah, others perfectly fine. Ah, uh, I remember this being tricky not only taking it out But putting it in the first time. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Now. I have it have them both on Uh, I don't know if this I don't think this is common to see a boat with uh, a double sail sort of thing like this but it's supposed to be for the ninja who have dragons so it's supposed to be designed after dragon's wings so yeah that sail is pretty much okay speaking of which I didn't know if it was gonna be the next step I should have just waited and uh, let it explain itself it is indeed a dragon's head at the very uh, bow of the ship is it bow at the front or is poop deck is the back or is the poop deck the front or the poop deck is the underbelly i don't know and they seem to use the and they seem to have used excuse me uh the same head model as the ice fire and lightning dragons again the earth dragon is the only dragon that has its own separate head build this is the exact point like where i need to start flipping shit to make sure everything goes in correctly Went to speak. Uh, going back to the whole VTuber thing, but with the English side, um, I should probably mention some of the other uh, English tubers, uh, the English Hollow Live tubers, um, English Hollow Live VTubers. My God, uh, so many titles just to say one thing. So obviously, there's uh, Calliope Mori. Uh, then there is the more subscribed or most subscribed individual uh and i still don't know which uh order her name goes in um i think it's gura gar uh g u r a g a w r uh she is based around a shark oh i should probably mention with a uh, uh calliope mori um she is based off a reaper and what i mean by based off of is each VTuber has a uh, niche thing that they have to go base their image off of. Uh, so, uh, like I said, uh, Calliope is a Reaper, uh, Gura is a Shark, and the other three are uh, Amelia Watson, which is, uh, I think, just a detective, but I think she's got a dog emblem as well but i think that's just because she has a dog in her home and i think that's another thing that and i think that's also what made the whole vtube thing uh such an easy like investment because people the, the people that they hire can just do it from their home and use a a, a facial 
rigging system than just play it on a gaming laptop. I mean, that's exactly what Calliope does. Her, her setup isn't the best, and she admits it from the very first stream, and it's kind of a joke that she and the rest of her chat, uh, excluding me, because I don't really... I don't really make it to live streams. I prefer to watch the full VOD instead. Just so I can skip through uh, boring bits. Because if I'm running on, if I'm running on specific times, I can't waste it uh, waiting for somebody to return. Um, and I've never liked live streams anyway. I, I've always been a VOD slash video on demand person. Uh, going going back to all the characters, uh, like I said, Calliope Reaper. Gura Shark, Amelia Watson is a detective, and then there are two more, which, um, there's Kiara something, which I, uh, I, I, I just haven't learned the last name, or what's supposed to be the last name. Character is based off of a phoenix, but she's got some joke with her chat that she enjoys eating fried chicken, so I, I, I don't know where that comes into play. Again, new, I'm new to the Hololive English side, let alone the whole uh, VTuber thing in total. Jokes with their chat go over my head sometimes, but they're pretty. The jokes that they have are pretty quick to. You're pretty quick to figure them out. And then finally, uh, uh, one of the last few members is uh, Inanis, Inanis, uh, Ninomai. I think is the full name but it is like apostrophes riddled in that name so I don't know exactly where everything goes how it's pronounced I just know that uh, I just know that all the names that they call each other by uh, obviously Callie for Calliope Kiara uh, Amelia slash Ame what they call her uh, Gura and then uh, Ina is what they just call the last one. And Ina is based off of, I think, Cthulhu. Or just a giant squid or an octopus or something. I'm leaning more toward Cthulhu because she's also got, like, black magic surrounding her. And each of and each person uh, has their own personality. So I can dive into a bit for some of them. Uh, from the very beginning with the one that I started with, she's more of a chill uh try and uh bro out sort of person i don't want to be rude and like say it but she's more i think tomboyish would be nah i don't know like the old joke the old meme that was grab a cold one with the boys like she would definitely probably be one to partake in that as well and then there's kiara which seems uh, there's some joke with her being in love with uh, Calliope or something. Again, brand new to it. Don't understand all the jokes. Don't understand why they formed. Don't know, don't know if they formed uh, in the first few weeks. Don't know if they're actually real. I, I don't know a thing. Um, then there's Gura, which uh, she has a extreme zoomer childlike a gamer ish sort of vibe that's basically all you need to know about her and then amelia but uh, hold on I, before i get to her I should probably talk about ina uh ina is the soft-spoken one very calm cool and collected uh you know, like going and listening to her she's just talks very little and when she does it's a smooth voice I, I, I again brand new don't know if i'm talking out my ass or whatever but going back to amelia even in the podcast that uh callie did she described amelia to um connor or sea dog uh because he wasn't into uh vtubers uh only giguk and the anime man were and they <laughs> They were trying to convert him, but he just had no reason to seek out that sort of entertainment. So he confided into a VTuber for a recommendation, and she provided him with Amelia because his personal tastes were along the lines of toxic gamer, and <laughs> that's exactly what Amelia is basically known for. <laughs> 
being the toxic gamer that she is. I'm brand new to the community. I don't understand everything. I don't know everything just yet. I'm still taking everything at face value. Uh, eventually, I'll try and catch up on a lot of stuff that I can to understand a bit more, but right now I've only made it to a few live streams to see what each person is like. Checked out Calliope just because I liked her personality from the uh, podcast, and that was basically it. I, I really just wanted to check out more of like what she had to offer just from the podcast, just because she seemed like an honest person and what she was talking about. A big thing that's on my mind is what about the actual person behind this avatar? I I'm more interested in that. And I don't know if that's the same for everyone, but that's what goes on my goes on in my head. Like, yeah, that's a it's a cool gimmick, but the only reason that we're staying uh, for this thing is because the person that is this avatar thing is just genuinely interesting to listen to to talk to to watch that's basically it and that's what all of youtube is as well you find someone that you find genuinely interesting and you just continue to partake in whatever they're doing i i wouldn't really know what else to talk about so i think i think i want to address this uh i I don't think I want to do this anymore. Not the videos thing, but uh, these types of Lego videos. I don't think I want to do this style anymore. I think what I'd rather prefer to do is what is already known on uh, YouTube, I guess, is called a speed build, which is mainly what I do for the unassembly, but um, I think I would just dedicate a video just to Instead of sharing my thoughts, which I could do during live streams, which I've been doing a lot more of, in which uh, these VTube VTubers have actually been interesting, have interested me in seeing like what sort of thing I I would be in charge of, because I don't know if the person that is doing the VTube sensation thing. Uh, has any say in what their character becomes or if the company hollow live says what they will be uh, I, I would hope that the, the person that is the actual like talent i'll say talent but uh, uh would have some say in the matter of whether or not they feel as if their character would be good or not i i don't know i mean they obviously have to have like artwork put in for one character or another so not everything has uh, can be uh, perfect right from the get-go, but um, I've been I've been contemplating on whether or not I'd like to change up the Lego videos into just speed builds because I feel as if like the videos themselves take way too long to edit. Uh, not everybody is even interested in uh, waiting through all of the stuff that I have to say just to see the builds. Uh, from what I've seen. And that I can actually see on YouTube the viewer retention. People just click through the video just to see the build process. And I completely understand that. Because people don't want to listen to just some random person's thoughts. Uh, so they People really only just came for the Lego set. And it's perfectly understandable. You, you've got a certain thing in mind that you want to see. So you only pay attention to that uh, whether or not you mute the video and just watch the person build the entire time another thing uh, mute mute the video put it on two times speed watch me build it at two times speed and just enjoy it that way i'm not one i'm not going to be one to tell you how to partake in your uh enjoyment of material things materialistic items and doodads and doohickeys and thingamajigs but now that i've officially like addressed it to myself as well as the general audience that would uh even pay attention to these videos it's at least known why certain things have changed uh for the next video uh in which i don't have to continuously talk throughout the video i can set up a recording 
uh, in which that entails me disassembling it the day before uh, and then just recording me assembling it and that's it. The old saying is if it ain't broke don't fix it but in this case things not broken it's just not working so I have to change it up eventually and I think this is where I have to admit to myself that a change of pace is a good thing mm, whether that be for my content in total or whether it be for everything that everybody else does listen after a while innovation is not the best is not always the best excuse me i shouldn't i shouldn't say isn't the best innovation can lead to amazing things however in saying that it doesn't always lead to success sometimes copying off one another's work does introduce new ideas and actually this kind of ropes into what's what else has been going on um as of recently uh there was uh, a series a three series of videos produced by um one person by the name of soviet womble on youtube someone that i've watched for years and who's been on youtube since the very beginning he's a he's a gaming youtuber but he has never shown his face once he has shown his body but it was mainly because of um vr streams as well as like petting his dog and everything um but he he prefers to remain anonymous uh except for his voice obviously he can't change that too much um but he puts a lot of time and effort into the videos that he makes and one of his most re the three of his most recent videos uh pertain to uh, like a video documentary thing where he has been looking forward to trying to do that type of content for a while. Uh, he normally produces a, one video a month, but it, it, in between each month, he tries to work on these other videos, which in, he himself says didn't always work out too well. So that's why they never went out. And, uh, his videos would would then extend even longer out uh, and have a release date for two months and then three months and then four months and then even to an extent of like five months I think there was a break one time uh, just because he was he was working on uh, bigger projects that required a lot of a lot more time to work on and if you can make a video like that and show how much work you've put into it perfectly acceptable that's exactly what he did most recently his uh his three most recent videos all on the same day that he released uh dealt with the evolution the success and failure that was daisy uh he and his friend uh that he would uh stream with and then he would later then use those streams as video content for youtube is what basically made him have his huge surge is DayZ content and everybody was interested in what these people were doing because it was such a big thing at the time now obviously DayZ has pattered out but for someone like myself who knew nothing of DayZ slash other things which he talks about in the three videos it was genuinely really interesting to hear the storyline of it and the reason that he made these three videos is because he himself is part of a programming team maybe even like a game development thing i i can't really remember what his day-to-day -day job is it does deal with like coding and everything that's as far as i remember uh he talks about how other channels decide to talk about the exact same topic the success and fail that was uh day z and they just continue to say uh, every channel continues to say the same thing they hear one thing spit it out on the next thing and most if not all of them have no credentials in knowing what they're talking about and that's why he wanted to make those three videos in particular the best they could to share the story and essentially what it was you can check out the videos yourself soviet Womble is the channel. I'll say it again. Soviet Womble. Check out the channel. 
it's a great channel for a lot of hilarious content but he dives into what was uh he and his friends enjoying arma 2 and how that started to allow people to mod the game and uh uh, this one specific person came up with this zombie survival mod, which would be called DayZ, and then that evolved, and then amongst all the evolution that that would produce, there would be copiers and evolutionists, which would take the concept, add something, or subtract something, it would fail, it would succeed, and that's basically what the evolution is of copying and progressing, like I was talking about. And... Um, what he likes to comment about is how, uh, game commentators right, as of right now, in, like, the MLG, always seem to say that, uh, the Battle Royale genre just came out of nowhere, when in fact, it wasn't, it didn't just come out of nowhere, it was a year-long, it was a decade-long process, because this game came out in, like, 2002, I think, uh, he said, now it's been a week since it's been out and I've only checked it out once because I've, because after the video came out, I kind of like re-remembered the channel and wanted to revisit all the old videos that he had, uh, that he had released. As funny as they are, they're just great. But he knows what he's talking about and seeing like the evolution of this game and, uh, lo and behold, after it's come about, the game studio that created Arma 2 wanted to bring along, um the creator of the original mod and they all wanted to figure out how do we make uh people happy that they would buy this standalone game and not just play their own modded version of arma 2 for day z and this company went with the original design of what the mod was and it failed horrifically because there were already so many mixed groups of other mods that enjoyed doing different things that it just ultimately failed to bring in people. And that's all that it was, is that it failed. It just failed to bring in new people is essentially what it all adds up to. Lo and behold, of those evolutionists, uh, they're, they're, he, go, he dives into it more and more, but... Of those Arma 3 mods, uh, of those Arma 3 DayZ ex expansion mods, it would kind of become a shoot everybody on site sort of PvP sort of thing, and that's where the whole Battle Royale sort of thing came from. And so people would see this concept, build upon it, change it in some way, and that's how we have this incredible boom of all these battle royale games. Whether they are good or bad is uh, up to player discretion. But it's still a really cool history. And after watching those two videos and like not knowing a single thing about um, the game while watching those old videos... Going back now, I understand so much of, like, what's going on and, like, why uh, these people enjoyed these games. Just because I've got a little, I've got a little slash a lot more context as to what's going on in the storyline of these people playing these games. And it's really, really cool to see the evolution and, like, somebody who actually knows what they're talking about explain what happened where the battle royale genre came from and what it's become it be that as it may because it was already like a free mod for people to play on from DayZ from arma 2 a free battle royale is extremely necessary for something to be like flourishing it needs to be free to compete nowadays. Fortnite, Blackout, Warzone, and other battle royales had an easy way for having a player base that would just hop in and go. However, one such game that would have a battle royale that was extremely well made, that just did not succeed, would be a game known as Battlefield 5 and a battle royale called Firestorm. It was incredible for what it was trying to do but it was very 
underdeveloped. Uh, how weapons would spawn just never seemed to work from what I remember. It was severely unfair for new people. It, it always seemed to favor people who had spent more time because they would know the spawn rates, spawn uh, weapons, where weapons would spawn, how a circle would change every time, which was innovative. It was always different every single time, cutting off certain areas of the map so you didn't have the same drop, same location every single time. Everybody knows about the circle encapsulate or en encroaching on everybody else. But Firestorm took it where the fire and the circle was already in place. And it did work. However, Battlefield 5, which was already a polarizing deal for a lot of people, tagged on this huge project of a, uh, of a Battle Royale onto a paid game. If they had made the game free, it would have at least brought in some more customers. However, making it a 60 dollar paywall before even looking at it is such a it failed so hard and so many people worked so hard on the game for a lot of other people to just ruin it whether it be marketing whether it be the ceo again i think i've talked about this before and it's not my place nor am i an expert in this subject to even give proper information about it there was so much promises in promise in this one game and it just fell on its face so hard and with that i think i'm in the home stretch i think i'm on the final bag hopefully by the end of this i won't have a single piece left on the table however knowing myself i've probably left out a step somewhere along the way so fingers crossed and uh i guess just enjoy this time lapse of this final bag because I don't really want to talk anymore and my back is killing me right now. So, sorry about the last remaining commentary. I said everything that I really wanted to, so enjoy it. And with this final piece, I bestow upon this ship a cannon. Like, a fully functioning one, too. Uh, as soon as I pop that on, there we go. Ah, uh, and here's in the instructions where I uh, use this secret compartment that I talked about earlier. We bring back out this tiny little box of jewels, a map, and cannonballs. And what that secret compartment is for is storing these three jewels and that's roughly it if it would allow me to close it actually let me just show off what this cannon cannon's firepower is actually like hopefully i'll be able to find this piece after i launch it um i'm just gonna aim it over i'll cock it back all the way into the back I'm gonna launch it over near the door hopefully it'll stay in the shot hopefully I'll be able to find it later Ooh, that went so fast like I saw it flash like roughly here like the light caught it perfectly for me to see it but it was right in front of it and then it just disappeared I oh, thank god the piece isn't damaged that's good yeah <laughs> the last thing I need is another piece breaking. <laughs> now I can show you the really big play function. Now this may be a ship and everything, but it does not float in water. But it does, however, float in the air. <laughs> now that that's such a cool play function, I, I feel. Like it's so well designed. Uh, everything you build up until that point is always in one position 
so it always looks like it's just going to be the boat version and then until you get to the last final page where it gives you the instructions to flip it over and then it converts into a flying ship that's so cool that's really so cool and like the designers deserve all the credit that they deserve um yeah i'm a bit too lazy right now and my back is even worse off right now uh to care about bringing the characters back out so i'm leaving it here thanks for everything and have a nice day